We're going to be reading in the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 18. 1 Kings, chapter number 18. Love to see Elijah. Seemed that the life of Elijah was, uh, well, in the scriptures, it wasn't too long before Elijah turned it over to Elisha. But uh, Eli Elijah made an impact uh, on many individuals and many leaders just for his uh, boldness, just for his life. In First Kings, uh, page 413, uh, in chapter 18, in verse number 41, verse 41, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink. There is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. He cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And, he, and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. He went up and looked and said, There's nothing. He said, Go again seven times. Came to pass as the seventh time, at the seventh time, that he said, Behold, there arises a the little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, saying to Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heavens was black with clouds and wind. It was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. And he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Lord, we thank you tonight for the privilege to be here. God, we're thankful tonight for the desire in our heart to be found in the house of God. Lord, we know that, uh, Lord, if it's a great day, Lord, if it's not so good a day, God, we know you're the same. Lord, we know that you love us no matter what. Lord, we know tonight, God, that you watch over us and give us this privilege to come together and share the scenes and fellowship the word. Lord, we thank you for each one that's here tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Lord, we pray you just bless each heart tonight, inside and out. Lord, whoever hears these words tonight, Father, I pray, God, that their heart would be touched and strengthened. Help us tonight, Lord. I pray you'd use us for a little while as a mouthpiece. Bless your word. Help you, servant. What you do first, we'll praise you. In Jesus' sweet name we ask. Amen. From the time back over in chapter 17 uh, that you start reading about Ahab, uh, I'm sorry, about Elijah, you'll find that Elijah, he, I believe that Elijah's life, he lived close enough to God uh, in the, uh, I guess it's chapter 16 there a little bit, you'll see uh, some, but in, in chapter 17, God spoke to Elijah and because of what was going on, as usual, the Lord said he was going to stop the rain. He said there's not going to be any dew nor rain uh, these years that he says he's, he's going to stop. Uh, well, he told Elijah what to do. Well, now, uh, you know, any time that these, these men of God, these prophets or whatever, uh, that they obeyed what God told them to do, usually, most always, it was against a wicked nation. It was against an evil king. Ahab had done evil in the sight of the Lord. I believe the Bible even says there in one verse of Scripture, he said in verse 30 of chapter uh, 16, and Ahab, the son of Ormar, Or Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. So he was an evil king. And God told him, God told Elijah, go down there and tell them, there's not going to be any rain. Well, see, he was taking his life into his own hands. I mean, if he hadn't had the faith, 
You see, church, to me, that's what makes a difference. That's what makes these individuals in the Scripture stand out and stand up. They had faith. They trusted God. God told Elijah, go down there. <coughs> and he'd done exactly what God told him to do. All right, then God proceeded to take care of him. He said, go over there by the brook. And stay by the brook, and I'll take care of you over there. You, it's important that I understand and that I practice and that I daily trust the Lord. That my faith don't don't question uh, so much what God says to do. If you know He's speaking to your heart, just do what He said. That's what Elijah did. So uh, as time went on, God used Elijah in, in chapter 17. He used him several times. In chapter 18, the first several verses, God used Elijah again. Why? Because Elijah obeyed. He didn't question. He didn't know what was going to happen to him by the brook. He didn't know what was going to happen when he told him to go down there in the part of chapter <coughs> the part of chapter 17 when he told him to go to to Zarephath uh, where the widow woman was at and uh, the widow's son. I mean, he knew that God was going to take care of him. That's the bottom line. That's what that we need to try to be able to to tell individuals, I'm talking about Christian individuals, born again, their life is evident that they're following and, and, and living and loving God. We need to tell them, God's got this. The Lord is going to take care of it. You say, well, what about if you go talk to somebody and uh, uh, they may be facing death? Well, if they're a child of God, I mean, you know, it's better. It's sadness when they leave the loved ones, but where they're going, we just have to have faith. That's the point. Just have faith. Just trust God. Elijah said, Ahab, they're not going to be in rain. Now get over there and I'll take care of you. I'll watch over you. He did. God used him right on down through in chapter 18. God used him again. Time and again. And in the first, well, in the middle part of as a, a, a Jehovah versus Baal, uh, the false uh, religion, and we know the story how that uh, they offered up the, the sacrifice and uh, it was sad, and then Elijah come along and told them to uh, to put the bullock on there and dig ditches. Now, this is one thing that amazes me about this right here in chapter uh, 18 and verse 33. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. He said, do it the second time. They did it the second time. He said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran about, round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. Now, the thing there is, is that uh, they had been arguing, and Eli, Elijah finally told them, he said, how long halt ye between, hey, he said, if God's God. Then worship him. So they proceeded to, to try to show how great their God was, and it failed. But now God told Elijah, Elijah went up there. Now you think about it. There was no water. It had dried up. It hadn't started raining yet. And he said, soak it with barrel after barrel after barrel of water. God Wanted the people, hey, the, 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 the problem that we're dealing with, the thing that we're facing, it may seem like it gets bigger every time we get out of the bed, but God has a reason. It's not up to me to play God. It's not up to you 
to play God. It's not up to us to try to fix the problem. It's just up to us to stay close to God and see what God wants us to do. That's all Elijah done. He obeyed the Lord. He followed the Lord, and the Lord finally told him, he said, Elijah, it's going to rain. Boy, he begins to tell in verse 41, Elijah said, And they have get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. What, three and a half years it hadn't rained. But now it's going to rain. You can trust what God says. You can listen and obey the word of God. I said it the last two or three services. And a lot of it is to me. When we are walking in the word, when we are walking in fellowship and in prayer, and we know that it's God, then don't stress. Don't stress so bad. God will Take care of it. Elijah could have thrown his hands up at any point in time and said, I'm not telling Ahab and that wicked bunch that it's not going to rain. But he went. See, every step of the way, God protected, God provided, God watched over him, God used him, God blessed him. He helped him to help families just because Elijah obeyed and listened and followed what God said. And now he's come down to the point where God says, I think the, the one thing that kind of got this started, uh, the Bible said in verse 37 of chapter 18, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. What about that? What about that? Verse 39, And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. You see, the life of Elijah had affected those people that had turned away from God. Everything he did, he said, God. God did it. God did it. I didn't do it. God did it. So once the people repented, once the people started praying, God said, I'm going to send rain again. So he walks out there and he tells uh, King Ahab. Now that's, that's something else. Just like telling him, uh, it's not going to rain. And then he starts drying up. <laughs> I've wondered a few times if maybe uh, the King Ahab uh, decided uh, 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 come to his mind at any point in time in those years without rain if he hadn't ought to hunt down Elijah. He hadn't ought to talk to Elijah. But now we see Elijah again minding God. And boy, I love it. I love it. He said, uh, told in verse 42, Ahab went up to eat and drink. That's what Elijah had told him to do. And, and uh, uh, Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. He cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. He started praying. He started talking to God. He knowed what God was going to do. The Lord had told him. Now, he, he was praying. This, this, is, I mean, this is beneficial in so many ways. Ahab could see what he's doing. He was talking to God. And I just, I mean, it just blesses my heart when, when God does something that to people looks so small, but it's so awesome and so powerful with God. Just like we were saying, an individual gets saved. This day and age, I mean, I'm honest, church, when somebody gets saved, you don't hear much. You don't hear much about it. But there's one thing about it. If that person really got saved, they're not ashamed to tell you they got saved. They're not ashamed to say, thank God for saved. Hey, God does little bitty things that men thinks. It turns out to be mighty big things. He said, and he said to his servant, go up now and look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. And he said, go again seven times. 
You see, Elijah's telling him, this is, this is similar to so many stories, Naaman, and so many stories in the Bible where God's already got it set. First time he didn't see nothing. Now, I don't know how far they was from where they was praying to where he could see out. Maybe it was a long way. Maybe it was a short way. But Elijah told him to go. He come back and said nothing. And Elijah told him to do it seven more times. Now think about it. Uh, I tell you, if he's a, I guess I automatically think if he's uphill, I'd have trouble doing it. But he went seven times and looked and didn't see nothing. You reckon he was beginning to doubt about that time? I just thinking what I would do. I'd probably be, I, I'd probably be wondering. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there rises a little cloud out of the, the, the sea like a man's hand. What about that? That rained in, in three and a half years. And Elijah's running around and telling everybody it's going to rain now. It's going to rain. Everything's going to be all right. Your servant went up there the seventh time and there come a little cloud about the size of his hand. That's God. That's God tonight, church. He doesn't have to have. <laughs> you know, he can use the smallest thing. I studied one time several years ago the little things in the Bible that God uses. Laws and mercy. And the first thing I think about it every time is the little uh, maid in the book of Kings for Naaman, the little maid, and God used her. Little uh, David against the giant Goliath. God's not interested. He said it himself. He's not interested in the size of the individual. He's interested in the heart. And if mine and your heart is set on pleasing God, He'll use us. Somewhere, some way, somehow, God will use us. And I've often said, and I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong or crazy or what, I don't know, but I've often said that I felt like that God uses me the most when I don't even realize it. You say, why do you say that? I say, well, you know, it, it might cause me to get a big head. I might start running around here and say, come up here and I'll lay hands on you and make you all better. No. But God will use you. He'll use me. If you've got the right heart. And God looks at the heart. He knows when we come to the altar, if we mean business, as we want Him as our Savior. He knows when we come to the altar and start praying if we want to be used of God. He knows when we come to the altar if we've messed up and we're wanting forgiveness. God knows everything there is to know. He just wants us to be available like Elijah was. Elijah told him. He said, uh, Go up, saying to Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. What would you think? What would you think? J just stop for a second. If, if it hadn't rained three and a half years, and here comes Elijah, and he says, It's going to rain. Well, his servant goes out there, and he sees that cloud the size of a man's hand. And, and Elijah comes back and tells Ahab, you better get down from here. It's fixing, to, it's fixing to rain. It's fixing to rain for real. Well, Ahab, he proceeds, came to pass in the meanwhile that the heavens were black with clouds and wind. There was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. Now listen, you can interpret this, I guess, any way you choose, but he said, And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins, and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. 
Now, I don't know about you, but the way I see that, Ahab had his chariots, probably by one horse, two horses, whatever he needed. He had access to getting off that hill. But Elijah had God. <laughs> Tonight, church, you know that song some of the ladies sings, I believe every once in a while, I'm a winner either way. When you know God, you're a winner either way. You may have a sluggish day. You may have a slow moment. We may even drift off. But we're going to win as long as we trust God. As long as we just walk with God. Don't say, Lord, what do you want? Where do you want? But say, Lord, what can I do? What can I do, Lord? What can you use me for? that I can benefit. I think so much of that little, old, uh, that little phrase that's used so often. If every church member was just like me, what kind of church would my church be? Think about that. If every church member was just like me, prayed like I did, read the Bible, like I did, invited folks to church. I think I think of Brian. He moved up there in Frank's trailer park, and he hadn't been there no time. He come back, and there's somebody there living next to him, and he'd already invited him to church. What we're supposed to do? We can't make them come, but we need to invite them, encourage them. We need to do something for God that He would have us to do. Now, if you see that any different than I do, you can share it with me. That, 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 that chariot taking Ahab off in there. And the Bible said the Lord, he took care of the loins of, of uh, Elijah. And he ran ahead of him. <laughs> he, oh, I'm telling you, that's God. That's what God can do. So many times in the scriptures, Go home and find yourself a little study and, and sit down and go to looking at the little bitty things in the Bible that God used mightily. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for these few words. Thank you again, Lord, for each one that made their way out. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for all those inside and out. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of our uh, individuals in the church that are battling with the cancer for Larry and uh, Lord, for Kim, and Lord, just help that family, Lord, in the new birth. And Lord, all these individuals, David, Lord, this upcoming uh, deal with him. Father, I pray, God, you just watch over him. Lord, I pray that you just touch every individual in the church, every church family. Lord, help them, Father, I pray. Lord, we just draw closer to you, Lord, and just trust you and live for you, Lord, in these last days. Go with us now. Watch over us. To do for us, we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Uh.